You're watching FE exam prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE exam. What's the difference between the EIT and the FE exam? In this video, I'll explain everything as well as give you the steps to register both for the EIT and the FE exam. This video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. The FE exam and the EIT are both steps on the journey to becoming a licensed professional engineer, also known as a PE. FE stands for Fundamentals of Engineering, while EIT represents Engineer in Training. Once an individual passes the FE exam, he or she becomes an EIT. The FE exam and the EIT are followed by the Principles and Practices of Engineering, or the PE exam. EITs need to pass the PE exam in order to become a PE. So basically, the FE is the exam and the EIT is the certification or title one receives after they pass the exam, although they're often used interchangeably. Completing the FE exam and achieving the EIT title are marks of distinction for engineers. Once an EIT, that individual is an engineer but not yet fully qualified. There are no formal training programs for EITs. One will begin to accumulate experience under one or more PEs in a company of their choice. Therefore, the EIT is kind of like an apprenticeship rather than an exam. One could say it begins once the FE exam is passed. Now, that being said, if you have engineering experience prior to the exam, it may count towards your PE license. Now, to elaborate on that, in order to become a PE or professional engineer, an EIT must gain a certain amount of professional experience as an engineer. That amount of experience required varies depending on the U.S. state that you are seeking licensure in, but it's typically eight years. Four of these years can be accumulated during college study and one to two more through postgraduate studies in some states, such as a master's or a Ph.D., this leaves two to four years of actual on-the-job experience. Now, once an EIT has acquired the total experience needed, he or she can apply for the Principles and Practices of Engineering exam, also known as the PE. Now, in addition to the experience, the NCWS requires EITs to acquire several letters of recommendation, at least three, which should come from PEs. The PE exam is divided into two sections, the morning and the afternoon, and after passing that exam, the EIT becomes a fully qualified PE in the state where he or she took the exam. Now here's the general sequence for the FE and EIT registrations. Number one, check state requirements to register for the FE exam on ncws.org for the state where you want certification. Some states require paperwork beforehand, so do this early on. Number two, pay for the exam. Number three, receive an authorization email from NCWES to schedule your FE exam. This might take up to 48 hours after step two. Number four, schedule the FE exam. The latest you can schedule is 24 hours before the exam date, and the earliest is 12 months after you've paid for the exam. It's recommended to schedule one to two months ahead of your test date, depending on your flexibility. Number five, take and pass the FE exam. Number six, apply to the state board to receive your EIT certificate. You will need to have passed the exam and received your engineering degree from an ABET accredited institution. Number seven, gain experience and take the PE exam. Things can get a bit scrambled here depending on the state. Some states require the experience in different stages of the process or steps in the process. And some states even allow you to get that experience well before you take the PE exam. 
Now, you can check out our Pass the PE Exam channel for information related specifically to the PE exam, and you can find that on YouTube by just typing Pass the PE Exam. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic you want me to cover or a question you want answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week.